Okay, so well, we are very happy to have Baruch Musavian and Yihao Zhao, who were not able to be with us in person, but kindly agreed to give a Zoom talk. And the title is Close Supersymmetric String Field Theories, Existence of Vertices. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving this opportunity to give this talk. Um, so we have given in total two talks about this paper, like this topic in the paper, uh, and both of them happen to be in GGI. Uh, I gave a talk about this like four years ago in 2019, but this time we decided to give a shared talk, so it might be you know, more interesting. So let me move to the outline of the talk. So I first briefly give like general introduction to why people care about string field theory and why uh, uh, it's useful. And just to prepare the ground for the super string parts, I give some very brief introduction to a bosonic string field theory, its formulations, the very like rudiments of the idea of the proof of the existence of its vertices, and, and then a brief digression, which basically now that we have the string vertex, what we can do with that. And then we move to the super string, um, um, a brief introduction to the formulation, although the full formulation in the language that we are interested in, which is the language of super geometry is lacking, but I give like the expectations and what is like uh, is demanded for its vertices. And also um, uh, finally, we, we give a, like details of the proof of the vertices that we have done in the paper. And then at the end, we end with the, some general directions for that is related to this work and also in general in string field theory. So um, let me start by giving introduction. So uh, the, the most well-known formulation of string theory is just string perturbation theory, which is the worksheet approach uh, by which, I mean, that we use the two-dimensional worksheet uh, to gain information about the target space physics in which the string propagates the theories, the worksheet theories were developed by Polyakov in the 80s. And the perturbative method basically instructs us to uh, how to compute the amplitudes, basically the GLU uh, contribution to unshell amplitudes is given by the integral over two dimensional geometries, whether these are you know, depending on whether we are considering bosonic string or super strings. We have different uh, integration over different spaces. And omega here is a form, uh, which is basically a, a correlation function on a fixed genus G Riemann surface or super Riemann surface, depending on whether we are working with bosonic string or super string. So this uh, is a formal procedure that has um, shortcomings. Uh, so that we don't know about the precise procedure to integrate over um, the two dimensional geometries. Uh, it's known that this omega has one physical singularities. The precise ways to deal with these singularities just very recently developed, um, at least a prescription. Um, and there are issues with the non projectedness of the moduli space, of the super moduli space. And it's known that the procedure only works for massive states. And for massive states, we, know, we need to take into account the issue of mass renormalization. Uh, there is an uh, issue with the shift of the vacuum that due to perturbative methods, uh, some potential is generated and this leads to the shift of the vacuum uh, in higher order perturbation theory, in, the, um, in the perturbation theory, basically when we move to the higher loops, uh, the vacuum is shift. So we need to uh, develop a method to deal with this shift of the vacuum because the original vacuum uh, would render uh, tachyonic. Uh, and the study of formal properties of the amplitudes like unitarity, analyticity, and cross symmetry is not very clear from the worksheet perspective. Also, more uh, formal properties of the theory itself, like vacuum selection, background independence, and the non perturbative formulation, again, is not very clear. So, an alternative formulation of string theory is string field theory, um, which is uh, basically a field theory approach to string theory uh, that its main aim to recover the same result for the string amplitudes, but from the perspective of uh, uh, target space, uh, space-time action, basically a second quantized space-time action. Just like in quantum field theory, the dynamical variables is a string field, it's in the quantum field. And 
it consists of like infinite array of space-time fields. And again, just like, like classical field theory, the space-time action is a functional of the string field, um, two main ingredients uh, to formulate any string field theory. First is a conformal or super conformal field theory, depending on, again, we, we, we deal with which type of string theory, bosonic or super string. And the second, which is the title of, uh, which is uh, the topic of this uh, talk is string vertices that I will explain what they are. Um, and in there are various formulation of string uh, field theory, like light one formulation. In this talk, we just consider the covariant formulation of the closed string when covariant here means just manifestly Lorentz invariant. Um, so a string, uh, so I uh, stated some issues uh, or some shortcomings of the usual on shell string perturbation theory. So string field theory can uh, conveniently at least uh, address some of these issues, like the is issue of the mass renormalization and vacuum shift. Uh, a question, so a string field theory depends, uh, one of the input data is a conformal field theory. So the question is that how much the physics, for example, the computation amplitude depends on the choice of this uh, conformal background and uh, string field theory basically uh, can give an answer to that, that if you choose two different conformal field theories to formulate the string field theory, the related string field theory actions are related to each other by field redefinition. So basically the physics is the same. Uh, the physical quantities that you compute using the two actions are the same. And uh, string field theory actually um, can provide a way to uh, construct the classical vacuum of the string theory the classic example is the paper of Schnabel that he constructed a solution to the uh, Witten's open string field theory. And um, because string field theory is a quantum field theory, it can be used, uh, the methods of quantum field theory can be used to prove analyticity, unitarity analysis, and crossing symmetry. For example, for unitarity, you can just develop the cutting rules, which is developed in a paper of Pius and Sen, and show that they satisfy these cut Kosky rules. Um, um, and then another big question is that how to quantize a string theory in uh, space times that have round round background. String theory provides a way to consistently construct that, uh, the, the, to uh, construct string, uh, string spectrum in such backgrounds. Uh, there are shortcomings, but there, there is this very nice paper of uh, Cho Collier and Yin that they give the general prescription of how to do that basically they realize the solutions of the classical equations of motion of string field theory that corresponds to Ramon's background and then solve the resulting equation in this background, basically. Uh, the resulting like linearized equation of motion in this background and the fluctuation of the string field or basically the string spectrum in, this, in that background. And in general, we would like to go beyond conformal invariance um, to, and understand uh, because conformal backgrounds are basically the classical solutions, and we would like to go beyond that. And there is not basically more much work on that. There is only one paper of Zuibov that shows that certain algebraic structure associated to the space of two-dimensional surfaces basically remain the same. So string field theory is a useful uh, tool um, to study many, many uh, very basic fundamental questions in the string theory. So uh, the general form of the action of any covariant string field theory is of this form. So there is a kinetic term as usual uh, of any field theory, and then there is an interaction term. Uh, and the interaction term involves the integration of certain, um, certain forms, or in the case of super case, it's like an integral form um, over the string vertex. Uh, and this is string vertex is basically um, uh, all irreducible Riemann surfaces with G loops, B boundaries, uh, and certain number of open and closed um, punctures. Um, in this talk, we only consider the closed string, so uh, closed bosonic string um, uh, for this for this part. So the string vertices are just basically all irreducible Riemann surfaces with n punctures together with the choice of local coordinate in the punctures or equivalently we can work with the surfaces with boundaries by cutting off the disk. Um, and 
to make sure that, um, and then the unitarity of the theory implies that this space of Riemann surfaces, compactified space of Riemann surfaces, uh, basically is covered by two pieces of data, which is the string vertex uh, together with the all Feynman diagrams of the theory. How do you construct the Feynman diagrams of the theory? Is basically by gluing uh, string vertices. So in there are two types of Feynman diagrams. One of them is just separating type diagrams, uh, which you take two vertices and glue them, which geometrically means that you consider all the surfaces in one of the vertices, all the surfaces in the other, and glue all of them. And there is uh, uh, this long tube uh, that can be interpreted as a propagator of the theory. And also there's the non-separating type diagrams, which you basically do a gluing on the same surface. Um, you take two punctures on the same surface and glue them. And again, this long tube can be interpreted as, uh, as propagators. So uh, basically, we end up with this construction that uh, this conclusion that we uh, we end up with this conclusion that uh, the compactified space of Riemann surfaces of genus G and N punctures or N boundaries um, um, is basically covered by uh, string vertices plus all the Feynman diagrams. All of in this P denotes the number of internal uh, propagators because we can have more internal propagator here, not only once, just like in any quantum field theory diagram. So, um, and this implies that basically the string vertex um, should satisfy this should satisfy this equation. All the string vertices for all G and N should satisfy this equation. And this equation should be understood in the sense of like homology, which I mean, manifolds are added and subtracted with signs, which depends on their orientation. So the question of the existence of the string vertex means that whether there is a subspace inside the moduli space that satisfies this equation. So this is the question that uh, is the main uh, topic of this talk. So to answer this question, uh, we can basically write this equation in a more suggestive form. So we consider this formal sum of a string vertices, and then that equation that we had here uh, can be conveniently written in this form. Uh, this is the boundary operation, and this is the uh, this is the boundary operation as before, and this is a Delta for the like the gluing because we have this anti bracket that can be constructed from the from this data, um, and this is nothing but the BV quantum master equation. So if a string theory a string vertices exist, they must satisfy the BV quantum master equation. So the question of the string uh, the existence of the string vertex is that whether there is a solution of the BV quantum master equation uh, where uh, I will explain where this really, uh, in which algebra basically this um, uh, BV quantum master equation should be satisfied. So a rigorous mathematical proof, uh, proof was established by Costello that I just very briefly go through uh, for just give an idea about like later part that Yehaw gives the details of the for the super case. So if we can, uh, BV algebra is uh, an algebra with a differential. Uh, which is equipped with an odd differential, uh, basically means that it's, uh, squares to zero, and it anti-commutes with the graded commutator of the algebra. Um, and now to show that uh, in which BB algebra in this BB quantum master equation should be satisfied, we consider the space of all surfaces with boundaries and consider this chain complex, basically this C star uh, at, uh, attaches chain, chain complex. And in this chain complex, we consider this boundary operation, uh, the sewing operation of the surfaces uh, inside these two subspace of uh, MGN, uh, and then and also another sewing operation, which is this delta. So if we identify this D, uh, this differential, in the boundary operation, and delta with this uh, gluing operation, 
uh, this complex turns to a BV algebra. And this is shown by uh, Sen and Zuiba. Uh, now the key step uh, is that um, an element of a BV algebra satisfies the BV quantum master equation if this equation is satisfied. So if you compare this equation with this equation and with the identification of the operators, um, the existence of the string vertex, to, to prove the existence of the string vertex, we need to show that there is a solution to the BV quantum master equation in the BV algebra FM that we defined today. Um, the basic idea is that, the basic idea of Costello is that to consider an alternative model, model for MN. And uh, this is a space N, uh, N uh, which is the space of uh, compactified curves uh, with N mark points, but with certain additional data that in each mark point is decorated with a ray in the tangent space. And also in each node, I mean, uh, I didn't, at each node, it's like decorated with the ray in the product of the tangent space in the two sides. Uh, so, and then we define this space, um, Xn, which is uh, this space and n modulus certain relations that makes this uh, the surfaces inside and n to be the boundaries to be unlabeled. And in, we consider the, the, the part that comes from the genus G surfaces, we denote that XGN and its fundamental top, top degree fundamental chain as this, uh, I denote it as like this uh, square bracket of XGN. And similar to Fn, Fm here, we, ask, we attach a chain complex to these spaces. Um, now the key idea is that, as Costello showed in his paper, is that this Fn is again a BV algebra, which um, this BV oper uh, operator delta comes from certain pullback push forward operation. And um, the the boundary operation is the boundary operation as before. Uh, and if you consider the formal sum of these chains, uh, he shows that they are satisfying the BV quantum master equation. And furthermore, FM and FM uh, are quasi-isomorphic with each other, which basically means that they have the same space of solution of the BV quantum master equation. So now that we have, sh now that we have shown that FN has a, has a solution to the BB quantum master equation, because of this third conclusion, we know that there is an element in uh, this BB algebra FM, which is basically our string vertices that satisfies the BB quantum master equation. So in this way, uh, he has shown, he rigorously established that the bosonic string vertices exist. So now that we have the string vertices at hand, what can we do with that? Uh, basically, we can formulate the theory. As, um, uh, so the gauge structure of the theory, if you want to do covariant string field theory, forces us to consider the BV formalism. And there are certain dynamical, uh, certain conditions on dynamical string fields, uh, which are these conditions, to remove certain ambiguities from the theory. And these Bs are, the zero mode of the ghost field, these L zeros are the zero mode of the virus generators. And um, the kinetic term of the theory, uh, which is written down by Siegel, uh, takes this form. Um, C zero is the zero mode of the ghost field and Q is the BRST operator. So if you, com if you compute the equations of motion of this free theory, you get this condition of BRST invariance of the string fields. And if, because the string field itself can be written in terms of the infinite array of the space-time fields, from this equation, you can drive the equation of motion of the space-time fields. And the classical action, uh, which only um, comes from the genus zero part, uh, um, is of this form. It is classical, basically means that it satisfies the classical BV master equation. And this string product, genus zero string product, is an integral over the, uh, the, um, the genus zero uh, string vertex with n external 
uh, puncture, and GS is the um, uh, string uh, string coupling. And similarly, uh, you can write the quantum action which satisfies the quantum BV master equation, which involves this infinite uh, array of inter infinite uh, number of interaction terms. And this is string product psi n is defined by sum over all uh, genus G sub, uh, all genuses, uh, and then integral over the string vertex of certain uh, differential form. Finally, uh, these interaction terms depend on the, uh, these interaction terms are basically the integrals over the string vertices. So uh, we need to know how to do this, how to construct explicitly these interaction vertices by integrating over the, uh, uh, the string vertices. Um, so to do that, we need to have a concrete characterization of the VGN. So what are the, basically which surfaces uh, are in VGN. And the furthermore, we need to understand this um, form in a way that we can integrate that over the string vertex. So in the literature, there are two proposals for this. Uh, one of them is the minimal area metric that each string vertex is represented by a, string uh, by a surface uh, that equipped with the minimal area metric, uh, which is, as the name suggests, uh, it's a metric that minimizes the area of the surface subject to certain condition on the non current factorable loops uh, on the surface. And the decomposition of the moduli space by decomposition here mean that the decomposition into string vertex and the final diagrams is very manifest in this construction. Uh, because when you glue surfaces, you again get the surfaces with uh, minimal area. Um, and this thing, um, but the explicit construction is lacking, for example, how to explicitly, what are the parameters that determine a minimal area metric uh, for the genus zero case is mostly known, but for higher genus, uh, it's not known. Uh, and then also the integration over the string vertices or in general modular space is not clear in this picture. Uh, the second approach uh, is using the hyperbolic metric, which all these problems are formally solved, all the problems uh, are formally resolved. Um, uh, the proper decomposition of the moduli space is again, uh, uh, can be achieved. And we can give explicit characterization of string vertex using certain condition on certain parametrization of the tag Muller space associated to the moduli space, which is parameterized, this parameterization is called the is certain coordinates called Fenchel Nielsen coordinates. And then the integration can be performed over the moduli space using some procedure that introduced by uh, Mirza Khani in her work in uh, the computation of the wide Peterson volumes of the moduli space. So using hyperbolic metrics basically resolves uh, every issue. So in principle, we can um, use this formalism to compute um, either string amplitudes or the vertice uh, interactions of the uh, string field theory. But the shortcoming is that how to express this in form omega in terms of the Fenchel-Nielsen coordinate. That is the part that is not clear. Um, so let's now move to the super case. Um, so there are two ways to do string perturbation theory or general string uh, supersymmetric string theories in the RNS formulation, so-called RNS formulation, the natural setting because it's a supersymmetric theories is using n equal one uh, super Riemann surfaces and their super moduli. Um, and in this formalism, the amplitudes uh, are computed by uh, integrating certain integ top degree integral form uh, over the or some integration cycle inside a product space. Uh, ML and MR. This product of space basically is the part, ML is the uh, space that um, parameterizes the left moving sector of the theory and then MR uh, the same for the right moving sector of the theory. For example, for heterotic string, this ML is just the usual ordinary moduli space and MR is an equal one uh, super moduli space. So we need to choose an integration cycle and there are certain condition, for example, we may reduce everything to the bosonic moduli, the, a uh, complex structure of ML should be complex conjugate of the uh, complex structure of the MR. 
And there is a different method which is based on this using this picture changing, so called picture changing operator, um, uh, which you integrate over the ordinary moduli space. There is some hidden sum over the spin structures that I haven't included. Um, and then you integrate basically a form, but in in the presence of certain extra, very complicated operators, which are called the picture changing operator. And the relation between the, the two is known um, in the sense that in the second approach, um, there is a way uh, to compute this, like formally compute this integral, which is called the, um, the vertical integration. It's a prescription. And in the vertical, and it's known how the ver vertical integration prescription comes from the choice of certain integration contour in the supermoduli case, which is this is done in this paper of Wang and Yin. So, okay, let me uh, now uh, to formulate the theory. Just basically, we need to understand. We, I mean, in this talk, we just consider the, the natural setting, which is the super case. The, uh, using n equal one superman surface. Um, n equal one superman surface, as uh, the name suggests, has is a complex supermanifold of dimension one, uh, one odd, even one odd, and is hence mod modeled on C one slash one. And the local chart, uh, each local chart is parameterized by a local coordinate z and theta. And the transition functions, mm, in analog to the uh, to the word ordinary case, is like instead of a conformal transformation is a super conformal transformation, which is basically this uh, equation. And this d theta is this operator. And for application in the string theory, we only need to consider the simplest type of singularity or parabolic structure. Uh, and, that and that means that we consider only two types of the punctures. Uh, which are called the nebu schwartz function and Ramon puncture. I think Yahoo gives more details about what they are. Um, and the generic solution of this superconformal coordinate transformation uh, are of this form. Uh, when f is an even function and epsilon is an odd function. Uh, and the, in, in the absence of the odd moduli, this epsilon, which is the even function, uh, is basically is zero. And we, we end up with this transition function, which is the transition function uh, of a spin rim on surface. And this second one is basically the transition function of the fiber of a spinner bundle. And then the choice of the spin structure basically comes from the choice of the sign of this square root. Um, uh, the next is to, because in a string field theory, we need to glue puncture to construct these Feynman diagrams. There are two, the, we can either glue the NS punctures or the Ramon punctures. And the gluing relations of the two are of this form. Um, there is some extra parameter, uh, alpha, in the case of the Ramon puncture, this comes from certain extra symmetry that the Ramon puncture has, uh, because the Ramon puncture is like nearly, nearly puncture. It's like should be thought of as a divisor. Uh, and then there is certain symmetry of that divisor, which is captured by this extra odd parameter alpha. Um, now let's, uh, I mean, the general formulation of string field theory in the super geometry language does not exist, but we expect that the, we know that the string vertices should satisfy the, our, which equations basically. So super string vertices are middle dimensional cycles in this product space again. Um, and then uh, together with the choice of this analog to the super, uh, to the board ordinary case, Instead of a local conformal coordinate, we have a local super conformal coordinate on the punctures. And this basically means that for G loop uh, and a number of NS and Ramon punctures, this uh, string vertex, which we denote by this, uh, has real dimension, uh, even real dimension 6G minus 6 plus 2 uh, uh, N number of uh, NS puncture and plus 2 number of Ramon puncture, and this number of odd. Moduli. Uh, and then again, analog to the ordinary case, the super case, uh, the interaction vertex should look like this, uh, which is certain integral over the string, uh, the super string vertex, depending on, again, this uh, depends on which 
string theory, super string heterotic type two, type one, this would be different. And again, this omega hat is a top degree integral form that has to be integrated over the string vertex. Okay, I think I'm done here. I think this Yahoo takes it out, right? Um, yes, I think this part starts. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, let me share the screen. Yeah, sure. Let me unshare. Um, I cannot share. Yeah, I, I unshared it. Now you can share. Okay, sure. All right. Okay. Let's go to All right. So let me first briefly summarize what Baru had already explained uh, for the uh, for the closed super string field theory. Um, in summary, we uh, first of all we, we enrich the the, the Rima surface uh, with n equals one supersymmetry. In, in other words, we con consider the so-called n equals one Susi Rima surface. Which is by definition a complex one dimension, one such one dimensional manifold together with a zero such one dimensional sub bundle uh, D, denoted by D, um, which is maximally uh, non integrable in the sense that if you take the commutator uh, and map to the quotient of the tangent bundle quotient by this uh, D, then it becomes an isomorphism. So uh, this implies that locally, this D is generated by this del theta plus theta del Z, which is the what Faru just uh, just uh, explained there. Um, yeah, this is the the uh, super uh, super coordinate transformation generator. Okay, um, and. We can add markings or, or, or um, uh, mark points on the uh, super Riemann surface. There are two kinds of the uh, markings. The first one is called Neville Schwartz, and the second one is called Ramon. And uh, the definition is that, uh, well, uh, intuitive, intuitive definition is that locally around the uh, Ramon mark points, z equals to zero, the, the, uh, the sub bundle D should be modified. So it should be gen locally generated by this del theta plus z times theta del theta, uh, sorry, theta times del z. So you can compute that the square of such uh, superconformal transformation is z times del z. So it, it, it has a zero at the, at the markings. And on the other hand, the never schwarz uh, marking does not uh, change the SUSI structure. So uh, so it's basically just a point. Uh, in other words, uh, the R markings should be uh, defined as a uh, as a divisor. Divisor in the sense that it's a uh, it's a sub manifold of co-dimension one such zero, and uh, uh, the demonstrable marking is a it's just a point. So it's a sub manifold of co-dimension one such one. And as uh, Faru just explained we can actually glue uh, markings. In other words, we can, so we, we can have nodal degenerations of the, uh, of the, from a smooth super surface or a smooth angles one SUSI curve to, um, uh, to uh, SUSI curves, which uh, uh, admit nodal singularities. And uh, this, uh, uh, this allows us to, to construct a, a, a compactification of the moduli of super Riemann surfaces with M uh, Neville Schwartz markings and M Ramon markings, denoted by S M G and M uh, in, in, in this um, uh, in, in this talk. So, and in our paper, we show that this um, uh, this compactification uh, first of all is uh, it exists means that it's representable by a the of super stack and it's smooth and, and the compact of dimension uh, this one, uh, three minus three plus n plus m. This is the, the usual, the bosonic one is, uh, agrees with the usual um, uh, bosonic moduli and there's a super symmetric, uh, this, uh, the super dimension. And um, 
and note uh, note that it, its bosonic part is already uh, quite well understood. This is the known as the moduli of uh, the uh, the stable curves with, uh, with with spin structures, for example, uh, in this paper, in Jarvis paper, and I believe Konaba also studied in 1980s. Um, and uh, uh, what we care about is the uh, 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 in in the string field theory is the so-called uh, sawing operations in uh, uh, um, which give rise to the uh, Feynman diagrams in the in the moduli. Uh, um, so in Bosonic case, we already have uh, it's quite uh, uh, quite straightforward because we we, we are we, we can just glue the boundaries, and uh, uh, its supersymmetric generalization is slightly more complicated because of these um, uh, different groups, uh, two 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 types of uh, markings. The first one is Nevershwarz, and the, the second one is Ramon. So. We should uh, distinguish these two markings and also their greens. For the first one, the Neville Schwartz markings uh, is uh, is quite straightforward. Uh, uh, it's very similar to the uh, to the bosonic one. Basically, we have um, uh, uh, so in 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 an algebraic language, this is basically just you can you can first glue the underlying space and push forward uh, the the structure sheaf. So. So it's straightforward to construct the, the so-called self-gluing and uh, a, a pair of gluing. So namely, we just take uh, two superman surface with a, a pair of Neville Schwartz punctures on, on, on each uh, of them. And uh, we glue the online topological space and uh, push forward the structure shift. Then this gives rise to a map be between the a product of the, of the supermoduli to the boundary of the supermoduli, uh, uh, and this is denoted by M and S. And similarly, we can have self gluing which means that we have a, a single a superman surface with two uh, with a pair of Nevershwarz punctures, and we can uh, glue the punctures and push forward the, the structure sheaf. This give, give rise to a map from uh, uh, one supermoduli to the boundary of the the another supermoduli. This is denoted by G. Never was. Uh, however, there there are extra subtleties in gluing uh, Ramon markings, and this is due to the fact that the Ramon markings is not just uh, uh, just a point, but it is a point with with extra structures. So, namely, it's a zero slash one dimensional submanifold, and uh, uh, and in gluing the the Ramon structures, there's a Z mod two worst choices of um, gluing of the spring structure. And this can be seen in a, in a local coordinate chart, setting that the, the theta two, uh, let's say theta one and theta two are, are the curve. And uh, uh, to glue them, you, 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 you simply set theta two equals to plus or minus one of theta one, but there's a one extra degree of freedom uh, or, or the degree of freedom to, to choose the, the shift, how do, you, how, how do you shift this um, coordinate? So, Basically, we, we should replace the source of the gluing by a Zimo2 uh, semi-direct product with the, uh, the zero slash one dimensional affine space. This is a, a bundle over this, uh, uh, the source of the gluing. And the target, as usual, is just boundary of the, the super room surface, uh, so boundary for the super modular. And similarly, we, we also have this, um, uh, Zimo2 semi direct product with C0 such one bundle over the source. The source is product of the supermoduli. And um, as um, similar to the, to the bosonic case, so what do what we mean by uh, uh, stream vertex is a uh, 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 a cycle inside the, the super moduli and uh, which satisfy the so-called so um, BV quantum master equation. And, and this is a top dimensional chain in the moduli spin curves so because we, 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 we considered a topological problem. So we, we model the, 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 
the uh, the old part, and we asked for the uh, the existence of such uh, uh, such collection of the the chain uh, uh, of top top dimensional chains, which satisfy the so-called BV quantum master equation, where delta is the, the a shorthand notation for all gluing operations. And to properly formulate the this this equation, we um, we mimic the the the, the uh, alternative model in chemical cellos paper, um, which is uh, basically a, a supersymmetric generalization of the work of Kimura, Stashev, and Bornov. So, namely, consider this uh, S tilde n m, which is defined to be the moduli of uh, moduli space of stable spin curves. Well, we, we allow disconnected curves. Um, and uh, we also decorate each um, never Schwartz marking with a ray at, uh, it, uh, at in the in the tangent space um, at that markings. And also at each Ramon marking, we also uh, we we decorate with a ray in the in the fiber of, of the spinner bundle. And uh, this record the, the 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 structure at the, the Ramon marking, and at each never Schwartz node, we this is as usual uh, the same as to the Poisson case. We decorate with a ray in the tensor product arrays of tangent space at each side, and at each uh, Ramon node, we uh, we decorate with a ray in the fiber of the spin spin bundle at that node. So uh, there's a there's a more fancy uh, version of saying this this moduli space, which is um, a, a real blow up of the of the moduli space uh, of the spin moduli space uh, blow up at the real blow up at bound. Then let us define the, as the, this uh, space X in, which is this um, uh, as tilde in M that we just defined, and we modulo those equivalences. Well, this e equivalences stands for those automorphisms which permutes the labeling of the uh, Ramon punctures, uh, Ramon markings, and as well as never schwartz markings, because we, we, don't, uh, we don't distinguish those, uh, uh, those points uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the stream vertex. And also because we, we, we also have a ray in the fiber of spinner bundle or, or tangent uh, bundle, and we don't want to record that uh, in the in the stream vertex, so we should uh, also uh, in, include those those rotations of the rays. So basically, this is a semi-direct product of um, the permutation group with uh, a bunch of u ones. So let us denote its genus G component as the X G and M. Uh, and we also denote their fundamental chain as the uh, as the, the this notation this bracket of the x, and it will, will form this following uh, complex, which is basically direct sum of the chain complex on each um, each component. And then we have the sewing operations um, defined for this chain complex. The first one is the self sewing. Which decompose uh, as the Neville Schwartz one and two Ramon ones. There are two choices of Ramon uh, self sewing because uh, we can, when, when we sew the, the, the curves, we, we just spin curves, we need to make a choice of the how to glue the spin structures. We can either glue them in, in the same direction or, or we can glue them in opposite one. And uh, this plus and minus stand for the, the, uh, the same direction and the opposite directions. Uh, and also there, there's a decomposition of the, uh, the so-called BV bucket, which is sewing of two curves. And uh, uh, it also decomposes as the Neville Schwartz one and the Ramon ones. Uh, notice that we, we don't distinguish the, the, the plus or minus um, spin uh, plus or minus gluings for, for distinct, uh, distinct curves. Because ultimately, if, if we have a different choice of the uh, uh, gluing, 
And uh, because of the desert Z2 choice of the global um, uh, automorphism of the, of the spin structure, we end up, uh, we, can, we can simply just uh, uh, take a Z2 automorphism of the one of, of, one of the component and, uh, and then, then glue. Then with this implies that uh, two choice of the gluings end up with the isomorphic uh, spin structures. And then one can show that um, uh, the, the, this operator delta uh, makes the, the DG differential graded um, supercommutative super algebra. Um, uh, this is the chain that we, we just defined uh, into a BV algebra. We also formally jo joined with the H bar. And uh, our main result in the, in the paper is that uh, it's the following. Uh, for each triple genus G with M uh, never Schwartz marking and M normal markings, such that this, uh, this stability holds. And uh, there exists a, um, uh, a chain inside the top dimensional chain um, inside the, the, the spin moduli, um, S, G, and M, uh, with the following properties. Uh, the first one, uh, the first two is that basically the, the initial condition, which means that uh, for genus zero with three never schwartz punctures and zero Raman punctures, this is this should be the fundamental cycle of this orbifold. In other words, it's just a zero chain of the coefficient of the automorphism group. And similarly for the uh, for genus zero, but with uh, with one never schwartz marking and two Roman markings. This is again the, the fundamental cycle of this orbifold. Just just a point with a uh, with automorphism, and this is zero chain of the coefficient one half. And then uh, the claim is that we can um, coherently extend those uh, v zero three zero and v zero three uh, v zero one two to all v g and m such that they the generating function satisfy the BV quantum master equation. And also, such choice of uh, such solution v is unique up to uh, homotopy equivalence. So, so to uh, to prove the, the result, uh, we basically follow for, uh, follow the notation in, in, in Kevin's paper, and we define the differential gradient Lie algebra G. This is um, uh, a grading uh, Z grading such that. Um, Gi is bent by uh, the elements of the, the following form. And um, here V if V is not a, a solution, it's just a just a notation for, for, for elements um, in, in, the, in the chain complex, such that each component V, G, and M um, uh, has the following degree. So this means that this is top dimension plus i and uh, plus one. Uh, in other words, uh, what we are looking for is, uh, so, so our, uh, we are looking for the, a solution of the quantum mass equation. This lies in the uh, homogeneous component uh, g minus one. And if you plug minus one, you get the right dimension. And, um, and there's a, the differential del plus uh, delta, uh, which is del is the, the, the usual uh, boundary operator of the, of, of the chain complex. And delta is the sewing, uh, self sewing. And there's a lead bracket, which is the, 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 uh, the uh, a pair of uh, curved sewing. Then the, the point is that the BV quantum mass equation is then equivalent to solving the, the more Cartan equation in this uh, differential gradient Lie algebra G. In other words, we, we, uh, we are looking for a V in the minus one degree. And a crucial part of the proof uh, is this uh, lemma, uh, which show up in, in Costello's paper, um, which states as follows. Suppose that G is a DG Lie algebra. Now, the, the G is a, can, be, uh, can be general. Uh, 
which is endowed with the following data, uh, a, decrease, a decreasing filtration uh, where it starts from the, uh, the first uh, F1 and so on, uh, such that the G is complete with respect to this filtration. And that, um, and it, the, as usual, this, this should be a filtered uh, filtration in the, in the sense of Lie algebra, namely the Fi commented with Fj sitting inside the Fi plus J. And the technical condition is that if you take homology of the, uh, the this uh, Fi quotient by Fi plus one, it it's required to vanish uh, for all I greater than equal to N for for some fixed n, and uh, for k equals to zero, minus one, minus two, then the map uh, uh, pi zero of the solution of more kind equation associated with g, uh, it, uh, it, it has a natural map to the solution, to the set of solution of more kind equation in this quotient, uh, quotient by fn, where n is the, the n show, shows up in the, in, in the technical condition. And then this the claim, claim is that this is an isomorphism, where pi zero means that this is a set of solution to the more cut equation and modulo the homotopy equivalence. So, um, so the basically the homotopy equivalence comes from the automorphism that uh, that that sit in the degree zero part acting on the degree minus one part. And in our case, we give a decreasing filtration as follows. We define the, uh, the case filtered piece to be generated by those, the set of the, uh, uh, the, the chains such that VGNM is zero for those, um, uh, for those K uh, uh, such that K is greater than this uh, 2G minus two plus M plus M. And um, the, the the key technical lemma is that, uh, well, we have this vanishing of homology um, for all i greater than or equal to three and k equals to zero minus one and minus two. So, so this amounts to say that we can simply just take a equals to three uh, using Costello, uh, Costello's lemma. Uh, so basically, at the uh, let's look. At, Briefly look at this, how to how to see this lemma, uh, how to prove this lemma. So uh, the vanishing of H zero and H one, H minus one is quite obvious. Um, this is because, so let's look at the degree convention uh, because um, uh, basically at, uh, our homological grading is such that uh, if you, you put zero here, then this is, this is, Top dimension plus one. So, so if you take homology, then, then it's, uh, it, it's automatically zero. And if you take minus one, that's the top top dimension of homology. And w w since we 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 are we look we are looking at the smooth uh, mod we are looking at the uh, the the real blow up of the the boundary of the uh, uh, of the compact phi the uh, 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 spin moduli. And this is homotopy equivalent to the to the non-compact non one, and uh, this is uh, 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 the, so there's a vanishing of the top dimensional homology, and similarly there's a and there's, there's a van vanishing of the h minus two, and this one is the 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 non-trivial one. This follows from the computation of the uh, of the dimension of the homology. And uh, the result is that uh, it, uh, for most of the cases, it vanishes. The only exception case is given by the genus zero with two Neverschwarz and two Ramon, or genus one with uh, one Neverschwarz and no Ramon, and for the even spin structure. I didn't explain, but there's a secret if you, if you don't, if, if, if you have zero Ramon, punctures, then the, the moduli is split into uh, uh, e even uh, spin structures, odd spin structures, which mean, which but which is defined as the, uh, um, a, a, you, you take the dimension of the, 
global global section of the spin structure and dimension mode two is zero or one. And um, and using this lemma, we can we can replace our uh, uh, DG Li algebra G. We can use a, a second step similar filtration trick on, on this G mode F3 of G. And this allows us to further reduce it to G modular G prime, where G prime is generated by those set of V such that VG and M is zero for, for those exceptional cases, which is basically just initial data of the, of the, uh, of the B quantum master equation. Um, and uh, uh, so if, you, if we take, take G quotient by G prime, this means that our VG and M only is supported on, on these ex exceptional cases. And uh, any, anything higher is, is, get, uh, is, is, is being modular out. And to solve the BV quantum mass equation, it is in, in this uh, quotient space, um, we can start with, uh, uh, with some answers, which is, well, there's not many, uh, Basically, v zero three comma zero is just um, is just a, a point with an automorphism group, so there's no no many choices. And similarly for for v zero one comma one uh, one comma two, this is basically just a proportional to the fundamental cycle. And uh, then we are looking at uh, the B quantum mass equation on the genus one with uh, with one never Schwarz. Puncture and zero Ramo punctures with even spin structures, and we demand that this, well, this is BV quantum mass equation at, on on that module I. And it has a solution for this V one one comma zero even if and only if the delta N S plus the delta R minus part represent zero uh, in the in the homology, which means this is equivalent to say that this is. Is a boundary of some some higher dimensional uh, homology class, and it is easy to to do this computation. Basically, saying that alpha must be equal to to beta two, so that this is uh, so that this is this, uh, their sum is the is the trivial uh, is is trivial in the homology. So so this this fixes the the relative coefficients, and so that we can. We simply uh, take v zero three comma zero to. If we set this to be one, then uh, uh, v zero one comma two is also the coefficient is also one. And also, you can simply you can also also do, do the check for the other one for the zero two comma two, and you show that if you take coefficient one one, then there's a there's a solution for for the v zero two comma two. And this finishes the the proof. And finally, because we are talking about superstring, and by definition, the superstring vertices is, is the, the, the diagonal cycle in the product moduli space of the left moving moduli and the right moving moduli. For the heterotic superstring, because it has supersymmetry, uh, 0, 1 supersymmetry. So the left moving is, is the trivial one. Uh, it's the, uh, sorry, it's the, it's the ordinary one. Uh, it's the uh, moduli of the ordinary curves. And the right moving is the moduli of, of spin curves. And we can take the diagonal map of the spin moduli inside. Well, uh, this is not exactly like a diagonal, but uh, on the right-hand side, uh, the second component is the identity. The, the, second, uh, the first component is just pro projection to the, to the ordinary moduli. And then we can push forward those, uh, those solutions on, on the spin moduli to this uh, diagonal. This gives rise to a solution of the quantum mass equation in the product. And similarly for type two superstring, where it has n equals to one comma one supersymmetry, so that both ML and MR are, are spring moduli. And uh, to conclude this, um, uh, our, our talk, uh, we'll leave with uh, a bunch of open questions. A, this is a, just a short list of the, of, uh, of open questions. So um, uh, the first one is a, a proper formulation of the closed string field theory using the language of, of the 
uh, uh, super geometry and uh, uh, also prove the, the, the existence of the vertices for the open closed theory. Here we only discuss the closed points. Um, and uh, we're also um, looking for developing uh, hyperbolic super geometry of the supermodular space. Uh, and also uh, explicitly compute, uh, compute those amplitudes, uh, just like in the, in the quantum field theory, this amounts to doing the computation of the omega in terms of the, the omega is the integration form, uh, which come from the superconform field, uh, uh, superconform field theory in terms of the Fancho Nielsen coordinates of the, the, the super generalization of the Fancho Nielsen coordinate. And also the, looking for the, if there's an equivalence of the Lorentzian and the Euclidean worship formulation. And, uh, and also the, the vacuum selection uh, problem using the string field theory or the 1PI theory. And uh, uh, the, the field theory to study the, uh, the string dualities. Uh, and also the last question is um, the space of classical backgrounds or, or the string backgrounds and the uh, formulation in the non-conformal backgrounds. And, uh, uh, and the last one is a fully background independent formulation. This is the end of the talk. Thank you very much for the invitation. Chuck. How is the difference between type 2A and type 2B string field theory encoded in your vertices? Uh, let's see. Right, there are two distinct mm -hmm. theories, type 2A and type 2B. Or, or is the difference encoded in your vertices or someplace else? Uh, in the vertices, I don't think there's a difference between type 2A and 2B. Um, because it's, we, we, we are only, only asking for, for the integration cycles on the, on the uh, reduced modular. And there's no uh, difference. Between the integration cycle is the same for the two theories. It's the measure that's different. Yeah. yeah. Differs globally by the ARF invariant. Um, I just wonder how that's encoded in the vertices. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why why it should be encoded in the vertices? Because I don't see it. Um... Well, the integration cycle is the same. It's two copies of you know uh, the uh, um, of, of the n equals one supermoduli space, right? The the measure is different, it differs by the ARF invariant. Um, so and, the, and so since the measure is coming from your vertices, I would have thought it would be encoded there, but I mean, it has to be encoded somewhere. I'm I just mean, I, asking where the difference is encoded. So by measure, you mean that the, the thing that you're integrating over, right? This in, in the integral form that you're integrating over. You mean that? Okay, we, we, we agree that that type 2A and type 2B are different string field theories, right? Yes. Very good. The integration cycle is the same in the two theories, right? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, but the measure, I'm just, uh, I, I'm a poor man. I just do string perturbation theory, right? Okay. The measure is different. The measure differs by the ARF invariant. Mm -hmm. And so in string field theory, I thought the, the measure was coming from, you know, expressions attached to the vertices, right? The omegas, capital omegas. The yeah, the, cap the capital omegas are different, definitely. What yeah, I know. Different? So that's what I'm asking. Uh, how is that encoded? Um, I mean, so you're integrating, or uh, I think that you're integrating over the same vertices, but with different omegas. So this is the difference between type one and type two. Type 2A and type 2B. 2A and type, 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 type 2A and type 2B, that's true. Okay. Oh, yeah, but, but the, I guess the, uh, this is Sasha Voronov, just continuing the comment. So I guess uh, to the comment of, of Jacques. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think the, I guess that uh, the string vertices don't really uh, deal with uh, those omegas. They... No, no, they, no, don't. They, they, so you integrate over the string vertices of so those omegas are. Let's say that they are in terms of certain moduli of the. Uh, uh, let's say that you can write them explicitly in terms of the supermoduli coordinate, like, and then you integrate. But the string vertices is a is a, is a space over which you integrate. So the omegas are different from string vertices. They are two different things. So the difference between type two A and type two B is encoded in omega. Not, omega, not, not in the uh, string vertices. Yeah. No, the, not in the string vertices. Not at least the, the, the thing that I can see. Vertices are the cycles. The, the, the cycles, yeah. The cycles that you're integrating over. Yeah. OK. I had my own question, uh, <laughs> uh, apart from commenting on Jacques' uh, question. Uh, so um, how do you, uh, like you, uh, how you concentrated on the case uh, of the modular space uh, of uh, Riemann surfaces with spin structures. Uh, yes. But in, in principle, you are interested in the super modular space of super Riemann surfaces. Uh, uh, so, how did you uh, exactly uh, move from uh, the super modular space to the uh, to the underlying? Uh, 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 class, a uh, classical modular space of curves with spin structures. So here we we are. Um, we're not that careful about the the underlying uh, algebraic structure of the the super modular space. So basically, we we treat it as a as a uh, as an obifold. Uh, it's a it, it's a mm -hmm. real entity obifold. So. Um, uh, so basically, those those non projectiveness uh, does not show up in the uh, in the uh, in this in this formulation. So we we basically uh, so in the in the real analytic world, we have uh, we have the 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 projection from the uh, super moduli to the to the underlying spin moduli. Uh, uh, I, I think what you can do, you can attach the same complexes to the super moduli and show that. The complex of the supermoduli, complex of the spin moduli, they are like quasi isomorphic to each other. So if there is yeah. a solution there, there is a solution also in the in the supermoduli case. Oh yeah, that's true. At the level of chains. At the is, level of chains, yes. Yeah, yeah. This is more obvious at the level of chains. That's yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then I have another short question. Uh, you have a, a uh, the main lemma uses a topological result, which in the situation of uh, Costello's paper was uh, the uh, was Harrer's, Harrer's vanishing theorem for the uh, co-dimension one homology of the modular space that it vanishes except in those uh, certain uh, certain cases. Well, I'm talking about yes. the next uh, page uh, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this uh, equation down on the dimension of this co-dimension one homology group. But uh, you're doing this in the case of uh, Riemann services uh, with spin structures. Uh, yes. How do you know it? Because Harrer didn't work with this. Was it, is yeah, it yeah, Harvest's yeah, result? So this, is, uh, so this is proven as follows. Uh, let's ignore the, the exception case. So um, to show that vanish by the 
by the Poincaré duality, we basically need to show that so the number of connected components of the boundary of this um, uh, of this uh, spin moduli uh, is 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 one. Well, because uh, more precisely, the the number of orbits of this permutation group acting on the on the boundary, and there's a, a one uh, connect component. This is shown by uh, uh, by so basically showing that uh, suppose you you start from code dimension one. A complex code dimension one, some some component of complex code dimension one boundary, and uh, you can deform it. You can deform it to to a, to a, uh, uh, to to another boundary component, and by 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 this kind of degeneration of the curves and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, a smoothing of the curves, we basically we can further degenerate and uh, and uh, smooth a little bit and. Uh, show that they, they, they can be connected. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, this is John. I'd like to, um, I had two questions. One is, you had this result that V is unique up to homotopy equivalence. But what, what sort of homotopy equivalence? Like, is it a chain homotopy? Uh, yes. BV algebra. Uh, yes, in the BV algebra. BV algebra. Or okay. Here is you can use this model in the in the DGL algebra. Yes. Okay. Thanks. And then another question is, you know, when I think about the BV formalism, I'm used to decomposing the action into degrees. So, could does it make sense to ask what the quadratic term of V is? Hey, what is V? The, the quadratic term of V. So V is like the, it's like the action in the BV formalism. It satisfies the quantum master equation. Mm -hmm. And in, in the BV formalism, as I know it, I usually expand the action into um, sort of polynomials in the fields and their derivatives. Yes. And as I was just asking if you know, if, if it makes sense to ask what the quadratic term in V is. Or if that's just not a good question. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so we have this formal sum of the vertices that satisfy the BV quantum master equation. I don't know okay. what. Yeah, I mean, if you expand the, uh, so uh, yeah, well, can you go back like to this expansion of the this V that is expanded? Uh, yeah, this expression. So it satisfies the BV quantum master. So there is an exponential there, right? So if you put that V in the exponential and expand, you get some products of the V, G, and M, I guess. Um, right? Yep. So it's with higher terms? I think the analogy is that V looks like the effective action, which does not have a quadratic term and, and starts with sort of higher uh, higher degree terms and the degrees n plus m i think any other questions so let's take both thank both our speakers for the beautiful talk thank you very much thank you very much thank you Ron. thanks for the opportunity thank you for the thanks, invitation. Ron. yeah